couple of years ago when I took this team on, we did the analytics on usage of, of the data, and it was fascinating to see, and I was saying that about 5% of the community was in a self-serve model, and 95% was in an IT request model. So if you're not, if you're not fearful about uh, disintermediating yourself and, and looking at that, what we developed was a fairly simple process around looking at intake, taking a look at the user community who's requesting this stuff, and then sending out the, the IT folks to actually educate them on how to move to self-service. We've moved the self-service from 5 to 25%. And so that does a couple of things. A, it lowers the cost of, of IT and, and certainly does a huge value around that. But I think it, it emanates the uh, usage and, and the uptake into the community with, with much more you know, much more appeal so that when you're putting together a, a proposal, you know, more and more people will get it. And so uh, I think part of that is, is certainly taking a look at, because I think the requests are there, the data needs are there, and you probably see them every day. And then analyzing, you know, how do I get people to try and learn more about this on their own? And I think we've had a good success story around that, and we keep marching down that path. But what we're seeing is in the different work groups, they have champions, right? Mm -hmm. Some groups have good, really good champions, and they're using uh, Access and Excel, but they're not averse to sitting down and saying, what can we do better? But then there's other work groups that don't. They don't have a champion. You know? They just continue slugging away and making requests yeah. of IT yeah. or, or, or what have you. So that, that part of the problem, you know, the have and have nots is an issue as well. So my, my approach to some of the senior managers over the next year is going to be that I, I want to co-op those people. They don't have to work for me, but the idea is that create a team in your group that will That's help right. feed. That's right. And they'll start thinking about the models and will help them get there. Um, but you got to shed other other work that they have, right? right? You can't also make them be the you know the widget boxer. They can't do that as well as this, right? They're going to have to create some focus, and then we'll supply them the data, the tools, because they understand the the day to day business better than better than we do. The first step we did was establish you know a, a center of excellence, and you know to, to speak to your or BI what we call our, our BI delivery center. And, um, and what we did is, um, is we, took, uh, we took some of the expertise from all the IT groups because we were pretty siloed in terms of the group division had people, the, you know, the pension division had people, the individual division had people, and we really kind of brought you know, the best of every group into, into a delivery center. I think uh, Gartner's been really high on the concept of a BI center of excellence, as, as have other uh, analyst firms. And I've seen that as really the transformational piece from an org perspective which really is, is that key center that is experts in this stuff that you can send out into the business. That you, and if the business has a challenge, we can help to develop the app uh, that knows the data, understands the data sources, that governs the data sources, that deals with integrity issues, that you know, oversees the integration you know, challenges, which are very complex in a lot of cases. So they've got a very distinct role. The group is about 40 people now in some life, and it's grown from, from quite a bit, but uh, I, that's a real competitive asset in my mind in, in getting this this relationship with business and and, um, and other groups really working. And I'd say it's a hybrid business IT group, really. It's not, it's not just a pure IT group. I think it, I think it comes down a little bit to mandate. <coughs> what I'm looking at now with this data transformation, because I'm like, should I take the lead on this, or should the business take the lead, or whatever. So I've gone back to... Uh, an enterprise architecture model, which has five layers. So there's a five layer architecture model, just go through. So you, at the top you have the business architecture where the business is carrying on. Then you've got the next layer, which is the information architecture. Then you've got the next layer, which is the business systems architecture. Then you have your next layer, which is the data architecture. And the final layer where we sometimes get into the trap is called the technical layer or the delivery system layer, which is like the, the cable going to those places, because I've had hotels in the middle of the jungle with the same sort of problem. And so I'm going back to my boss and saying, where is my mandate? Because sometimes he talks to me at the delivery system layer, and I sort of own that, so it's easy. But then when you get into the data, which is unknown or siloed now, and then I'm at the business layer. So I'm at the business systems layer. I have governance there, and I lead the committee, and I lead out on the delivery system. But now the data is in the middle and it probably won't be assigned to me. Like Ted said, I don't care where it is as long as it works. 
right? But the thing is, you need to be involved. And then if you're innovating, then your mandate means you're allowed to be at the business architecture layer. And that's when we're not at the table. So that's sort of how I see it.